So for those of us joining on YouTube, uh, we're going to let this run, loop run for just for a little while because we're waiting for some Zoom members to join us. But we'll be right with you in just a moment. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, peace. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Velbus Welcome to session. It's a very short, twenty-minute session. So, for the privilege of YouTube, I'm just going to introduce you to our Zoom members. So, ladies and gentlemen, would you like to introduce yourself to, please, the YouTube audience? Natesh, would you like to go first? Uh, yes, my name is Nitesh Shirani, and I'm the distributor of uh, Wellbus, and uh, my company name is Superclick. And um, yeah, so I cover the London Zone. Excellent. And joining us today, we have. Out of you two at the bottom. Yeah, um, Manish uh, from Ultimate London. Vinay going into smart homes. 
Fabulous. Thank, Thank you very much. Well, let's crack on. I'm going to show you a quick presentation about the uh, Velbris thing and I'm going to go into the hardware. This is all set up behind me. So two seconds. There we are. Right. So welcome to Velbris. Uh, what is it and what are we going to do? So there we are. There we are. Right. Welcome to Velbris. What is it? It is a professional system. It's not available for off the shelf. It's not available because it's a consumer unit. It is only for professional installers. Hence you'll have to go through your distribution channels and get professional some support. It is effective heating and controlling, heating and cooling control. I'm gonna take this earpiece off because the hearing myself is driving me mad. It is an effective heating and cooling management system. Every glass panel has a HVAC thermostat built into it, and you can use that for uh, any number of heat sources, and then each glass panel would act as its own control for the room that it's in. It'll also swap into a uh, air conditioning controller, so you'll never get the situation where a heating is fighting with the cooling system. As far as advice interfacing is concerned, it's really down to whatever device you want to put in. As long as it's got very simple controls, you'll be fine. For example, if you wanted blinds, then I'd say something like the Somfy 40 motor, which is either DC inverted control or a mains two live and neutral control. Um, we get the positioning of that through a timer within Velba. So very, easy, very straightforward to set up. All we have to do is run uh, a timer for the full retraction of a system set that a couple of seconds more in Velbus, and then you'll get within reason the position you're looking whenever you put the, the, the window, the blind, the shutter, or the canopy out. Uh, as far as single points of control concerned, what we're talking about there is the fact that every glass panel and every Velbus input device can control everything within the network. So you're not having uh, to run halfway across the house to switch all the lights off, for example, if that's what you want, or that's what the customer wants, simply program it up to one button so you can get an on all out feature if you like. Uh, the nice thing about Velbus is that we don't have uh, light controls as such. What we have is a dimmer or a uh, pulse width modulated DC output and you can hang whatever fixtures you want as long as you've tested that they're gonna work nicely with the Velbus stuff. So you're not li locked into any one particular brand as far as the end fixtures are concerned. Great question. Uh, people will say to me, is this a new product? And the simple answer is no. It's been around now for at least 16 years. I think we're clocking on 18 years now with in excess of a million professional modules deployed across the globe. Uh, that could be anything from a one bedroom flat to a luxury apartment to an office block to uh, a luxury cruise ship where all the guest cabins are equipped with Velbus. So it's an extremely reliable product with a good heritage. Uh, the nice thing we would say is uh, the ongoing cost of ownership. We're not interested in how much you pay for it on day one. What we're interested in how much you can save through owning this product for the lifetime of the property. So uh, I'll give you an example. We've got a project going on where the customer saves roughly three pounds for every day that the heating would normally have been on per room because they aggressively profile the heating to switch it on and off when the room's occupied. So it's, it's all about owning the property and keeping the cost down in the long term. We say, uh, we, as I said, the glass panels are, can be programmed to control anything anywhere in the property. So uh, the idea of two-way, three-way and four-way switching is, is completely easy. As long as you've got a glass panel in the room or an input module in the room, then you can assign that action to any number of light fittings. Uh, say you've got a staircase with, that goes onto multiple floors, as long as you've got a, uh, a glass panel at every floor, you just simply set that one action to toggle on the floor and that will control all of the lights. So there's gone are intermittent switches and complicated uh, connection points. And that last one was difficult to waste energy in. No, you can't. You can put timers on so the lights will turn off automatically. And um, we're talking about switching the heating and cooling on and off in a, sort of an aggressive um, schedule so it's when you need it. Obviously the cost of energy is still going up there's a big push at the moment for the government to roll out uh, renewable energy sources so if you're retrofitting to a property and they've already got a gas system and a multi-zoned and you fit uh, a Velbus system then what we can do is um, 
if they want to change from the gas system to an air source or a ground source or a solar electric heating, we're not going to have to change all the manifolds and all the control systems. It's just one small relay we change. So they're free to change to whatever sort of energy source they want in the future. The answer to all this is to use less energy. So again, we go back to the aggressive heating control where we dial things back and we give the customer the, the right to control the heat at how they want. And how do we do that? Well, you get the infrastructure right when you're installing, whether that's from a groundfield site or whether it's um, a retrofit. As long as the infrastructure is in, you can tap into that in the future and you control all sorts of things, whether you're locally controlling a radiator or whether you're controlling a manifold for the heating. And the same with the cooling system. You control the cond condenser outside and then individual uh, fan core units indoors. And what the nice thing about Velbus is as long as you can access the Velbus cable somewhere in the project, you can control everything. So if you want to run a 200 meter cable to the garden shed and control the assets in that building, as long as the Velbus cable is there, it is not a problem to control it from anywhere. So the question, of course, is what do you control? And the real, the simple answer is absolutely everything you can think of. Uh, as long as you can find a way to integrate with it with a zero volt control, 10 volt control, uh, mains, pulse width modulated, uh, low voltage pulse width modulated, we can control everything. One of the things on there is an alarm system. So you get a daughter board for a Texcom Elite or the SciTech Comfort, and we can either harvest the alarm states within the uh, alarm system and get it to influence Velbus, or we can get Velbus states to influence the alarm. So there's, there's plenty of options there for you. Uh, so the answer is everything. <laughs> So yes, keep going back to this. Any button can control any fixture within reason as long as you've got it configured. The glass panels, uh, these are quite unique to Velbus. A lot of other companies are trying to copy them, but they're not quite got what we have. Uh, that there is an OLED uh, top of the range generation one glass panel. It shows four buttons, but it's actually eight pages of four buttons. So there's plenty of options. It'll also control 13 heating zones, show you energy usage readings and weather station data, but that's for a more advanced course. If your customer's wanting absolutely traditional switches, then we can have uh, any sort of redactive switch and we simply mount a Velbus input panel behind it and pick up on that data. Remote controls, uh, here's just a small selection. We've also got a new Velbus key fob. So if they want uh, radio control of some kind, then we can integrate that quite easily. And then there is, of course, there's various options using umbrella software to get, deliver phone apps and web interfaces. We say umbrella software because Velbus is a standalone system. It doesn't require a central computer. It doesn't require an internet connection for anything other than a time update. So the, the web and the phone app is very much a bolt on. So you're free to choose whichever piece of software you're most comfortable with as an installer and what best meets your client's re design requirements. And obviously once you've got that computer in place, it's a very simple process to give them uh, access to their home via the internet, whether that's directly through the uh, web browser or whether it's through a, uh, some, a device like an Alexa or a Mycroft or Google Assistant, any number of voice controls. Uh, the, the no prices for guessing this. Uh, the question is sooner rather than later. The answer is sooner rather than later. And obviously from the outset, there's no point going back into a property once the plastering has been done. It's just not possible. Uh, obviously, if you can get right at the beginning, get everybody in the same room and talk about everything, then that will make life, your, your life easier as an installer because you'll know all departments are talking to each other. And then again, no matter how small, uh, whether it's a bet, you can integrate bedside lights if that's what they want. As long as you as an installer know, you can run the right cabling. Sometimes that might, they might come to you a bit late and say, well, can I have a bedside cabinet uh, automated? And as long as you can find that Velbus cable and tap into it, then yes, we could fit a, a local relay to it and get control of the lights. So consider everything. Now let's get on to the nitty gritty. And I'm going to put my earpiece back in just in case you have any questions. Right, so lighting. Uh, at the moment with standard lighting, you've just got that classic on and off or a dimmer switch if that's what you want. But 
if to save energy, what do you think about timers? Say you've got a, a light fixture with a lot of energy consumption, you wouldn't want it on for hours and hours, especially if it's a staircase with a massive chandelier, for example, but you could put a timer in Velbus so it appears that it comes on when they press it, it goes off when they press the button again, but what's actually happening is starting a 10 minute timer. So in theory, they've gone up the stairs, they've forgotten about the lights and the light will switch off automatically behind them. And you could in theory put a, a passive infrared sensor on there as well. And that would just switch the lights on when they make a movement underneath it. There's also the thought of dimming and atmospheric scenes. So you've got a room, for example, with five different dimming circuits, whether they're LED strip, uh, low voltage down lights or mains lights. One button could be programmed to set a precise scene within that room rather than having to scroll through and uh, like a bank of switches and switch that one on and that one off and 10% on there. To it. You just assign it to one button. Uh, many, many years ago, someone suggested in a project that they just wanted four buttons in every room, regardless of how many lighting circuits or windows or blinds, and they wanted to define three particular scenes and an off. So they know whichever room they go into, top left-hand corner is always going to be day, right-hand side is going to be a comfort or a relaxation mode, and then the bottom right-hand corner could be a late at night, it's whatever they want it to be, but they know every room is exactly the same. Uh, the all off command is often forgotten, but very useful in building control systems because you can simply leave the house, press one button as your way out, and you know all the heating's been set off, all the air conditioning's off, all the lights are off, or setting a virtual occupancy timer if you want. And you can also set the alarm or a delay exit or whatever you want. As long as you've got the integration, there's that one button control. And then there's the automatic off as well. So regardless of what other settings, if your customers don't want timers, they just want to say, that's it, two in the morning, everything goes off that isn't normally on at 2 a.m. You can program it up really easily within the glass panels or any of the input modules. And of course, last one out is very similar to the all off command. It's, uh, yes, we're the last one, so shut everything down as we walk away. So let's look at the degritty, shall we? This little graphic shows a four-way relay pack, four lights and four glass panels. And can you see from that exactly how easy it is to wire? So you're not running a single control cable to a ceiling rose, breaking out to a switch and breaking out to the lamps you're running every feature back to the relay on a radial. However, the difference is the glass panels, the, the control points, they do run on a radial at low voltage. Uh, there's a 15 volt bus on a four wire cable and it runs around the property in uh, one loop or two lump, the loop per floor. There's no hard and fast rules how you set that up as long as each glass panel is connected to the next one then you'll get full control of everything. And you can do, uh, you can set an action between one glass panel and one lamp, uh, five glass panels and four lamps. There's, there's no end to combinations you can think of to run these lights. So uh, you guys interested in heating and cooling? Is that something in on your radar? Yeah, yeah. Excellent, good. So I thought I'd involve you just for a second. Uh, so, what's your background in heating and cooling? I mean, we just do the normal ways at Hive and Nest, basically. Okay, so that's a remote access system. So, how would you normally wire that up? They're all retrofit, so we take out the existing whatever they've got and just replace it with this, basically. Oh, excellent. Okay, so that makes life a bit easier. So, all the actuators will be in place. You're simply yeah, removing any wiring centers. I'm dropping in a Velbus relay and then room thermostats. Yes, no, maybe. What was that? Sorry, you cut out. Oh, did I? Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, what I was saying was would you, you'd normally go and take out the wiring centres and then you'd fit a yeah. consumer unit with a couple of uh, Velbus relays in there. Okay, yeah. Yep, okay. So let's have a look at how we, we'll skip over this because uh, we've discussed it already. Uh, is talking about uh, being a, a proactive with a heating control. 
which if you're already familiar with uh, Hive and Nest and Heat Miser, then that'll be quite familiar to you. So uh, I've, I've gone away with the classic graphic, which is gonna go straight into the automation stuff. So you'd fit a glass panel in every room on the data bus and link it all back to the relay modules. And then exactly the same as they've uh, fitted already, if you've got a manifold system or a series of two port valves, it presents in plumbing terms, nothing more than a Nest plan. So uh, we just, yeah. let me see. There we go. So that shows uh, the basic wiring plan. You've got the white data bus around the top. It's just in white as it stands out, that's all. And then you've got the relay module at the bottom. And then I've shown this continuous wire, but that's using like a bit of multi-core YY where you're only running one core yeah. to each port. So instead so, of a uh, TMV, you'd have one of your valves basically. Yes, indeed. Yes. I mean, if you're looking at controlling radiators, then uh, take the TRV off and put uh, a, a, a port actuator on there. As long as it's M30 or M28, then it, it should be fine. That will give you local control of that radiator. Or if it's a manifold, then theoretically use exactly the same actuators that are on yeah. place. OK, you're nodding, so I assume you're happy with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> OK. I'm trying to make this as interactive as possible, but I'm also aware that it's YouTube and YouTube can't see you. So I'm having to relay what you're doing. Uh, so in this graphic, you can see we've got the two port, well, yeah, the port actuators on the side. And we've got, it'll either be, in this case, it's 240, but you could easily use 24 volt actuators. Uh, yeah. So the relay channel simply fires the actuator and then the micro switch within the actuator are all paired together and they do the call for heat from the boiler. Okay. That makes sense? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Uh, case study, I said earlier about a guy who's uh, put the idea forward for having uh, three scenes in every room and this was a project we worked on about nine years ago and he's got 38 channels lighting across the two floors. Uh, heating zones is idea. It's quite an open plan downstairs. So all the upstairs rooms are independently controlled and then the open plan downstairs. It's one big zone really. Uh, yeah. He's got heat, a full extraction and heat circulation, a heat recovery system. So yeah. we don't do much with that way of interacting it because it runs low level all the time. But what we can yeah. do is interface and say, well, it's in boost mode or summer mode. So we take, switch off the heat reclamation and turn it into a cooling system. Cooling, yeah. uh, it's just contact closure, so nice and easy. And then the pro, four preset heating states uh, are exactly that. So within the Velbus glass panels, you have uh, four modes of operation for the heating. They're basically anti-frost, night, day, and a comfort or a boost mode. So normally we program between the night and the day mode for occupancy. And if they go on holiday, we set it as anti-freeze. And if, yeah. they're, if they're sitting, sitting and having a nice sort of relaxed evening, but it's getting a bit chilly because they're not moving around, they've got the option to boost for either 20 minutes, an hour, two hours, whatever they want. And then it'll go back to its normal scheduled events as soon as something triggers. So uh, questions, guys, feel free to pick my brains. Yeah, you know the lighting, what's the maximum number of switches you can have on one radio? Yes, so if you've got, um, uh, yeah, radial. So if you've got a room and you've got 16 down lights in the room, you'd classify it as one yeah. circuit. So yeah. yes, you'd parallel them all together and then just run one radial back to the control node. And in terms of your Velba switches, what's the maximum you can have on the bus ah, table? Right, okay. Uh, there are 255 base addresses in the Velbus system. The glass yeah, yeah, panels yeah. use between one and five, depending on how you've got them configured. So, yeah. and then the units in the cabinet. So as long as you take into account you've got 255 base addresses to use, then yeah. you could put hundreds in the property if you really want to. Okay. No, because as I know some of the other ones that we do lux on, that's limited. They oh, tell yeah. you for every 10, yeah, run one back. Right. Okay. Well, it's all down to the cable. The yeah, yeah. And obviously worrying about current consumption. And what you can do is you can divide up the power to the units if you want. So we've got projects that say divide the the different floors into a different power supply. Yeah. And then just join the data together. 
Fine. And another question, you know, the alarms, do you guys do uh, PIRs? Do developers sell their own PIRs? We do, yes. We've got an external variety, which has got a heat sensor in it. And yeah. we've got two indoor units. And one of those indoors has uh, a different mounting frame. So you can either have the... Uh, yes, I haven't got one on right there. You can either have the 20 mil hole or there's an adapter for a 67 mil hole. And then yep. the one I can show you is here. So this is a ceiling mounted PIR. Yep. Okay. It's not just a PIR. We've got uh, two different motion events and then each of those motion events can be light dependent. So you, I made a good example. I've got one in my own kitchen and uh, whenever it detects movement, it turns an under cabinet heater on for 20 minutes. Yeah. So you always get a tank of hot water directly underneath the sink. But if yeah. the light level in the room is low, it'll also turn the light on. Okay. Yeah. So yes, we do PIRs. And you know these PIRs, do they dump, can you use them as like an alarm system as well? Because uh, basically Luxon, what they do, everything works on movement. Mm -hmm. And in effect, you don't need an alarm system because that doubles up as a PIR. Yes, like I said earlier, when you can link to a uh, an alarm system, then you've got the choices of either taking the Velbus events and triggering stuff within the alarm, or you can take the the alarm sensor events and trigger things in Velbus. So it's completely up to you as to whichever way you want to do it, whichever is the most cost effective or meets the client's requirements. Fine. And another thing that I haven't seen mentioned, uh, uh, music, music servers. Music service, well? not something in Velbus. It is very much a specialist feature, uh, but okay. not impossible to link to. What we tend okay. to do is leave the building control as a standalone feature, let the AV be defined as a as brand or as a solution, and then we'd use the uh, umbrella software to link the two together. So okay, right. I, I've just signed off a project in Stoke-on-Trent where he's got a 4K projector, projector lift screen. Uh, he's got a 4K curved screen, and then he's got a 7.1 Dolby Atmos system. So yeah. that all works within itself, but he's got a glass panel on the wall and he can have one button called media mode and that will close the blinds, drop the projector, drop the screen, switch the amp on, switch the projector, everything it wants to do. But you have to kind yeah. of treat it as two separate entities that are joined together. Does that make sense? Together, yeah. Okay. Anything else on your mind? No, that's it at the moment. All <laughs> oh, right, okay. Uh, in that case, then, let's have a look at the next step, which is getting hands-on with the technology. We just have to get a bit dodgy with this uh, Handycam. So let's see how I get on. Let's talk about wires to start with. Oh. So I'm going to pick the best camera for this. I think I'll go with that one. Which one's that? Right, OK. No, I don't like that one. I want the other one. Right. So what we've got, am I on that one? Yes. So you're familiar with the locks on cables, which are yep. basically four wire, uh, four wire systems. That. Yeah. 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 What have I just? Are you not getting audio from me, or have I just dropped my own? Or I think I've just trodden on my. I've completely lost the. Oh, there you go. You're back again. No. You hear us? Can you... Yes, it's all gone very quiet. Oh, there we go. I think I just trod on the cable and broke my own connection. <laughs> Don't know where there is. Oh, dear. This is going to... Oh, no, I can hear you. Right, it's better. You're back again. Right. OK. Sorry. Sorry if that's more technical interlude. So, uh, let's have a look. Yes. So, on that cable, we've got a power pair, which we'd normally put uh, 15 volts down for Velbus. And then we've yep. got the shielded data pair, yeah. Yep. Yeah, nothing unusual there. And then there's various different options. There are solid core K and X versions, uh, okay. which are in uh, external grade. There's ducting grade. There's all sorts of versions. And what you'll get is different size cores, 
and it's the cores yeah. and the twist on the data pair that tells us how far we can take that cable. So yeah. with a really basic untwisted uh, thin core, we can get a couple of hundred meters out of it, but with a stranded thicker twisted core, we can have up to three and a half kilometers between the very first Velmus yeah. module and the very last one. So that should really cover most of the requirements yeah. you've got. So. Does it have to be your cable that you use, or can you use anything like Belden? Uh, yes, yes. I mean, what we tend to do is give you the Belden reference number, and yeah. then any cable that meets that specification. So, unlike KNX, that say you have to use KNX branded cable. Yeah. yeah, as long as it meets a basic standard, then yeah, we're away. And what we would say is, don't ever be tempted to fit Cat Five or Cat Six, yeah, 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 yeah. purely because, uh, and this is for the sake of the YouTube purely because the cores are solid and they're thin and they get damaged in the rising cages and it looks yeah. perfectly okay, but you turn your back and, and it's no. fractured yeah. and, it, and you spend a life trying to find them again. Yeah. So, um, what's next on here? Let's have a look. So, what has Natesh shown you of the kit already? Mm, nothing. Right, well, nothing, nothing. Natesh, what are you on? <laughs> I've only spoken on the phone. <laughs> oh, I see, fair enough. Have you looked at the uh, Velbus website? Yeah, briefly. Briefly, very briefly. Very briefly, <clears throat> okay. Well, if you look on the right hand side, you'll find there's an option to download the installation guide and the programming guide. And if you scroll right to the bottom of the website, you'll see there's a link to the very latest brochure. And if you look at page, I think 17 and 18 in the PDF, it's the, uh, the center pages in the physical brochure which I shall show you now. And this is all the stuff that your clients will see. Yep. yep. So there, that's the real selling point for the customer. There are all the glass panels that they'll interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. And then the other things are all the, the back, oh, wrong, wrong way. I forgot I was holding it backwards. Yeah, all the other stuff is the cabinet what you say? based. 17, 18. I beg your pardon? What page did you say? 17 and 18. Uh, let's have a look at this. 16 and 17 are the centre pages. And then beyond yeah. that in the brochure are all the, the, the back of house stuff, all the relay modules and dimmers. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah. Yep. So let's have a look how to get this up and running. Okay, so let's have a close up of the wiring. So if you're already familiar with uh, Loxon and those other systems, we can probably bypass the fact that we've got uh, a data cable that goes into each of the modules. Try to show yeah, yeah. that. Yeah, we can bypass all that. What bat boxes do you guys use at the moment? Uh, they are round. The, we have to get them from Luxon. The round ones. All right. Okay. So, do they look very familiar to the? Very similar to these? Yeah. 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 Okay. So this is a European standard. It's a six seven mil wide. <laughs> Uh, we Velbus recommend a 40 millimeter deep version for minimum. You can get the 50 and it does make life a little bit easier. And these are standard European boxes. Uh, yep. the, the Velbus glass panels mount into a frame. Uh, the, the edge lip panels come with a metal version of this, which is ever so slightly bigger, but for all intents and purposes, it's nothing different. Um, once you've got your panel into the wall, then that will just screw on and you've got the luxury of being able to rotate just ever so slightly. So if you're not quite square in the wall, same as with the locks yeah. on and the other stuff, you've got a bit of wiggle room. Okay. And then the glass panels just snap straight onto the front. I'll try again yep. so it doesn't cast the shadow. Can't quite see the display on that. And then we said earlier about these being four buttons, but you've got luxury of having yep. 32. You don't have to program all of them. If your customer only wants one page with one bit of functionality, then that's all you program up. Uh, in this example, uh, what have I got here? So let's go the other way. Right, so this is page one, and we can simply say, we've got an action that says light on, light off. And they say, yep. uh, nice and straightforward. Heating wise, uh, I can just put that into a boost and I don't know whether you can see, but the little lights come on there to indicate that yeah. the heating's come on. And then the all off command. So if I was to put the lights on as well and let's put the lights on over there, 
if I was to hit the all off button, it wouldn't happily just set everything yeah. up and go. Okay. okay. Uh, PIRs, we'll look at that in the software and show you a bit more. And then this is a two button version of the standard glass panel. And again, you just program up whatever you want into there. And what I didn't show you was the other buttons. So on here, we program them so they're not doing anything to lighting. They're setting day, day and night mode in the thermostats. So if I put that into day mode, if it's cold enough in this office, it's not, it's too warm, so it's, it's not gonna come on. But we'll show you that. Uh, there we go. So office, we're scrolling down and we can scroll through all the rooms and we can change the heating mode for each zone. So I don't know whether you heard a relay click there, but yeah, let's yeah, yeah. go to office A and then you can see we've got the heating coming on on both sides. Yep. And again, you can take that off. And what I can do, I've got a load of other glass panels in this box, which you just connect on the standard data cable. And we can scroll through all of the uh, temperature modules in that cabinet as well, and then come back around. And you have up to 13 of those. So as long as you've got less than 13 zones in the house, you can control them yeah, one, right. from all from one glass panel. What I have got in a couple of projects where is each floor has uh, 10 zones. So we tend to fit one OLED on each floor to control those local zones. And then we do something like this where it's not a thermostat control. What we're doing is we just simply say that would say upstairs and we set the entire upstairs today or the entire upstairs tonight. Okay. What, you can program it however your project requires. Uh, and then this is the scenes concept. So day in theory will, it'll dim up a light. That's a 12 volt to MR15 and a bit of main switching. And I don't think you can see it at the back there the smelly D strip as well. Yeah. Uh, evening will change to a different thing. So that one's dimming out and then that's changing color and it's just turn, and there's yeah, a yeah. delay off on there. So you can do whatever your imagination can come up with and then off, just switch the whole off. You know, uh, that LED strip, does it have to be Velbus is on LED strip or can nope. it be any? No, nope. anything 12 volt, 24 volt, uh, really doesn't matter. All you do is define how you're going to control it. We do it in Velbus using a 10 volt controller, which then goes to, uh, we can use our Velbus two channel, uh, four amp per channel PWM module. If you've got a yeah. one, one room with an awful lot of current, then you just use multiple dimmers or you can use something like a dimming driver by Meanwell, which it accepts the 10 volt output and goes straight into the power supply and dims okay. the output. Okay, so, but we'll look at that in more detail when you present a project and we'll work out what yeah. the current requirement is for the LED strip. But in essence, you are, the answer to your question, uh, no, it's not Velbus only. Okay. Okay. Um, so what you will need on every module is a USB interface and there's only one per installation and that simply enables you to connect your computer to control it. Uh, what we've got here yeah. is uh, that's a DIN rail mounted input device. So in this particular model, I've got some magnetic window sensors and these are configured so the, uh, no, they're not configured at the moment, they, when they were in deployed, they would, when the window was open, it would put the room thermostat into safe mode and effectively yeah, yeah. turning the heating and the cooling off. So again, they can't waste energy. Uh, if, they, if they close the window, the heating will come back on. And there's a great system in Holland that's using that to actually give people green points every month. And whichever tenant earns the most amount of green points, gets a benefit and it's a lovely way of doing it yeah. and that's how we've achieved it with a DIN rail uh, seven input device and then coming over to this cabinet we can see we I spoke earlier about the redactive switches and you being able to put in whatever you want so yeah. I've got a, just a selection of momentary switches there just to show that it's all possible and then there's the there's more glass panels so we've got the edge lit um, another edge lit one there and then there's a third, a four button. But you'll see all these on the center page of the brochure, page 16, 17. Yeah. Okay, and I've, I've, while we're talking, I managed to whip out another model and this is the smaller PIR. So that center yeah. section can be mounted independently or you can use okay. the bigger one. Um, yeah. Yep. 
that's, that's nice, yeah, that's not powered up, but there you go. Right, so would you like to see how it's all configured? Yeah, please. Yes. Right, okay, let's run through that. Uh, desk. Right, so you've got your network set up, uh, you've proved that everything works. Oh, that's the other thing I didn't show you. Um, let me swap that back. So underneath every, uh, ouch. I should have had a screwdriver in my pocket, that would have made life a little easier. Anyway, underneath each of these covers is a little... Yeah. You know, when you don't want them to come out... <laughs> anyway, talk amongst yourselves for a second. I'm going to get a screwdriver. Right, and we're back. So, with a little screwdriver at the side, look how easy that is. So when you're configuring it or commissioning it without, before you hook up a computer, you can, in yep. theory, just double check all of the circuits by whipping the cover off and proving out each circuit. And then the same applies for the dimmer circuit. Okay. You take the cover. What is it, like a test button or something, is it? Big button? Where is it like a test button or something? Yeah, that's all it is. But we also use it for configuring. So I'll show you that in a moment. So let's go to the computer and I'll show you. I'll show you what's going on with this. Right, so let's go into Velbus. So you've got your system powered up, you've proved out that the circuits are doing what you want them to do, and when you've powered up the glass panels, you'll see there's a little light comes on, and when you tap it, it makes a noise. So it proves that the system's sane. I've got to change my earpiece, it's just gone off again. Oh, okay, no? Yes, that's better, right. I ordered another earpiece, but it hasn't turned up in time. So uh, you fire up the Velbus link and uh, we just start a new project and just call it whatever you want. It's entirely up to you. Uh, yes, we'll overwrite this one. I'm going to connect to the uh, existing network and because we put a USB cable in, then we'll use that connection. Uh, it's come up on COM4 in this particular computer. And I'll explain on the better on the bigger training course. I'll explain what this auto assign is, but we're not going to do that because this system's already configured. So when you do that, it makes a connection and it scans and detects all of the modules, as you can see there. So that's scanning. So that's discovered everything on the uh, bus behind. I'm going to start with blank ones for the moment and show you what we do. So we can now confirm that everything we thought we wired up has appeared on the side there. And uh, it's, there's nothing. Because we didn't read the settings, it's, these, it's assumed they're completely normal. But what we can do is we can synchronize just one whenever we want. So let's just choose that one and we'll read the settings. And you'll see it's read out all of the settings for that glass panel. Yeah, now, okay. now, if you had a Reiko system, you can't read out the settings. Same as you go to a KNX setting. The meeting has ended. So for all of those on YouTube, we've just lost the Zoom connection because we've been too long. So I'm going to assume they're going to invite me back to another one. Slow down. They've told me to slow down. When they get back online. I... So just go through for those on YouTube. Uh, what I was going to show them was how uh, the difference between Velbus and other systems. If you go back to an installation, uh, say, a month or weeks later, then you, as long as you can get a connection to it, you can read out all of the settings. So the owner's not locked into a particular installer. There's one installer I know that actually takes out the USB connection and uh, arrives on site and connects that in when he wants to connect it but it's not stopping any other installer from rocking up with their own um, 
with their own USB connection and reading out all the settings. Oh, apparently I've got to join back in again. Um, not entirely sure. Oh, the same one. Oh, right, okay. Well, who'd have known it was the same invite? <laughs> so I suppose I should start the video. Hello. Hello. I'll edit all of that. I'll pull down the video from YouTube, edit all this out, and put it back up again. No one will ever know. <laughs> so what I did while you guys were away was I told it to start reading all of the settings from the model. It can take a bit of time because the OLEDs have all the bitmaps to pull down as well. But once you've done it and you've pulled in all that data, you don't have to do it every single time. Where do we get to? What shall I show you? Let's show you. I tell you what, I'm going to do something slightly different because what we're going to show is show you how to set something up from a starting point. So I will unplug the rest of the models. We'll close this. Now I don't want to save it, and um, we're going to start all over again. So uh, I've disconnected all the ancillary stuff. It's purely what's on that display. Yeah. Um, and I'll tell you if I turn that round there, and then what I can do is I can keep slip, uh, jumping between the two to show you. So uh, I'll reconnect to the model. Uh, yes, come four. Thank you very much. We'll scan and we'll find all the modules and they'll appear. And again, I'm not going to read any settings in. I'm going to just assume we've gone to an empty site. So there's nothing there. And the nice thing about Velbus is this, I've already got a configuration file for this module. So when we finish this session, I'll just open that up and then write yeah. it all back again. So there you go. That's just the modules are on that unit. Let's not synchronize it. So you said about the buttons for testing. So there, so there you can see I'm just pressing a button and we've okay, got yeah. the action. So what we can do if we add, um, there we go, click on the add action. Uh, how can I clear that? No, I can't. Right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a select mode. So if you're two handed in a site, you might have one of you in the room looking at the lights, looking at the glass panel, and another one in the control cabinet. So yep. the person in the control cabinet's obviously got the laptop and you can click the detect and you can say to your chap, is that the light in the room going on or off? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And that populates just there and we accept that. And then you do exactly the same thing with the room. So you'd go to the chap in the room and go, can you press a button? And that button gets accepted on there. And then we simply set one action. So in this case, it would be a toggle. And what we'll do is we'll synchronize and this will remove everything from all of the other devices. So nothing else will work. Yep. So it'd just be a toggle on and off. Yeah, it, if you wanted to, as a basic, as a quick way of getting something up and running, yeah, yeah. then yeah, just use the toggle. And then what I'll do is, I'll, once that's running, I'll show you uh, where the time has come in and how that can be used. So thankfully, it's only the OLED that will keep us delayed. So this one's going to take the longest, and this is because of completely clearing everything that's inside it.
So if you were you having, say those that use the staircase as an example, where you've got the same light circuit controlling all the lights on every level, but you've got multiple switches, then you would repeat the action and create a new action that says, yes, exactly the same relay channel, and then you, 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 your oppo would go up to the next level, press the button on the next landing, and so on and so forth. You just add that same toggle action. And I'm going to do that in a moment when this is all set up so you can see. Once this is finished, the rest will whip through ever so quick. Hello? Hello? Um, -de -dum -de -dum. So what sort of size projects are you used to using, used to install with? Just uh, household projects, really. Um, Which is... I'm totally, new. I'm totally new to the game. Right. Uh, Manage the one that's got the electrical company running. And now I'm just joining the smart home side. Excellent. Uh, okay. So you're going to head up the technology, they see. Yeah. So I come from a tech background. Um, I do server app installs um, and uh, create apps and websites. So tech's my side of stuff. But I just want to go hands on now. Okay. Fair enough. So you're still interested in keeping your hands in with the apps? Are you going to take charge of the yeah. UIs? Yeah, all of that. Still keep my hands in there. But this little side thing to go on with. Okay, yeah, it's a nice way of uh, joining the skills and carry it forward. Because that's what I did. I, I spent 30 years doing uh, theatre electrics and then decided I wanted to change. So I've used a lot of the same skills, but now in projects that last for 10 years rather than 10 days. Yeah, that's it. So you can see, once it's got over that OLED, it's whipped through and done the rest. Yeah. Okay, so if I swap back to that other camera, we can see all the other buttons have got absolutely no functionality anymore, but that one yeah. that we programmed has. Okay, so if you're on another floor and you wanted to add an action, we'll say we'll detect that same light again, that one, and that pops up. Shoot, your camera's gone blank. My camera, you're right. It would help if I hadn't pressed the fade to black button as opposed to the uh, auto take. So thanks for that. I hadn't noticed. So <laughs> no where, did we, where did we get up to? Did you see where I was selecting the channel? Nope, I didn't see that. Right, OK. <laughs> right, so let's go back to the beginning again. So at the moment, the only thing we've got in there is one action on that channel, yep. which is the one which is triggering that backs and forwards. Yep. Okay. And we'd add another action and we use the detect. So use the detect and we say that button. And so we just switch the light on and then. Yep. Oh, oh, never seen that before. Okay, so we'll accept that. That goes back. And then we detect the button. So I'll press a button on there and accept it. Then we add. Right, so now we add a toggle and OK that. The action already exists. Did I press the same one? It does not already exist. Right, okay, so add that, we detect that, yes, ah, uh, I see what's happening, Some th a button event is picking it up, right, so let's, let's do this the other way, okay, so there's, that was one way of adding actions, the other way is to select it from a tree, so we would say we want uh, relay three, which we happen to know is that one, and then we want to select the initiator, which is going to be the OLED, and button one is top left hand corner. And then we choose toggle, and that's added it. And if I synchronize that and only write the changes, swap back to the camera, we can see that we've still got that action there, which is controlling it. And we've now got another action yeah. on there. And you can add that 
up to up 32 times. You can add out 32 actions for every relay channel, which should cover most of the okay. scenarios. However, that will leave the light on forever. What we could do yeah. instead is set a start stop timer and you could say, let's have it on for five seconds and we'll synchronize that. And now if we go back to the camera, we can see that uh, that one will switch it on and off and you can see the feedback LED is coming on to say it's on permanently and I can okay. switch it off. But if I press that button, both the LEDs start flashing to tell us we've got a timer running. And then after five okay. seconds, it goes off. So, and then the same principle can be applied to the uh, dimmers as well. But the dimmers, you can also set a, which one shall I use? That's channel four, I think. Right, let's try and do this for you. So we're gonna show you atmospheric din values now. So button two on the OLED, let's add an action and we'll put it to the dimmer and it's channel four. Now, interesting if we, what we didn't show you is how to rename it. So you don't have to have uh, factory names. You can call them whatever you want. So we could say uh, downstairs if you wanted. And we're gonna choose the white. And again, we can have toggle if you want. So that's toggled yeah. and we'll write the changes. There you go. So that'll just simply put it on. So that'll just dim up and dim down. Nothing clever. But yeah. mm -hmm. if you double click on that and choose uh, dim at long press, toggle at short press. And let's do something funky and show you the times on this as well. We can put that on, let's have a seven second delay. Okay, so this is similar to the start of timer, but we can also dim it. So if you just tap it, it will dim up yeah. and it will dim down. But if you press and hold yeah. it, it'll dim up to a given level. Same. And then the next time you press and hold it, it'll do the opposite of what it was doing previously. So it'll dim down yeah. and stop and then off. Okay. But we set a, a timer in there. So after seven seconds, it should dim out all by itself. There you go. Okay, okay. So, so that's, as you, can, as you can see by the software, uh, there's an awful lot of actions that you can choose from, which do any yes. number of features. And there's a great website. Um, action list, I can't remember the Velbus actions. Let's go from there. So if you look on Google, if you do Velbus, act Velbus actions, I could spell, it would be great. So there you go. So that should pop up with the Velbus actions. So on the website, you can find all of these. So let's have a look at, uh, let's do a control F and dim up. So uh, dim at long press, toggle at short press, that was the one we just used. And then that will show you and explain all the behavior on there. So the information's in the public eye, you don't have to go cap in hand begging for information. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, shall I show you quickly how to set up the, the heating? Yeah. Yeah. Right, okie doke. So let's just recap what we've got. So I've got uh, an actuator on here, which uh, is wired indirectly to relay channel one down here. Yep. And if I put on that there, you can see that one, is it that one? Yeah, so anyway, that's switching on and off that actuator. So within Velbus Link, what we do is we'll find the thermostat. So let's pick this one because it's on. So we'll call this uh, family room just because we can. And there we've got the eight outputs that are specific to the thermostat. And the only thing you have to do is add an action to the heater channel, which would go to the relay. And we happen to know that's the
heating. Okay. And all we add is the momentary follow. So if when the thermostat's calling for heat, it'll close the relay. When it's not calling for heat, it doesn't. It's that simple. Okay, and we write the changes. And if you've got a rudimentary heating system, that's it done for the zone. So if, if you watch just there, where it currently says uh, released, 22.5 yep. degrees in November, can you believe? I've got no heating in this room at all. It's... <laughs> So it's either the copious amounts of lighting I've got on to make this video half decent, or I'm, I'm generating heat myself. So if we were to uh, operate this from the Velbus, and again, yep. just keep an eye on that channel just there. You currently see it's in frost mode, so the heating's released. Uh, we've got a current temperature in the room of 22.5 and a target of five. If I scroll through the modes, you can see not a great deal happens, even when we get up to comfort, because the target's still lower than the temperature. But what we can do is we can override the temporary target. And there you go. You'll see that the heater has come on as pressed, yep. and it also brings the pump channel on. So if you've got a situation where you've got, uh, I don't know, circulation pumps for each floor, and individual yeah. zone valves you don't have to worry about complicated <clears throat> logic you simply say well the pump for that floor is linked to the pump channel for every thermostat and the actuator for that room is linked to just the heater channel of that thermostat and it takes care of everything for you there is a oh, the screen's gone off uh, there's a boost circuit so if i lift the target temperature of, i think this one's set to three degrees so if i lift it to something ridiculous and set it, no, not quite in, oh, there you go, right. So now the target temperature is more than three degrees above the current, it's added the boost circuit. So if you had, uh, I don't know, say you've got a secondary heating circuit in a room, or you've got a, a heat, a fan heat system with a two speed fan, you can engage the check and speed automatically once the target temperature is more than three degrees away from the room temperature which means you won't uh, as the temperature is rising to reach the target it'll switch off the boost circuit and then it'll gently climb that last little bit so it's not a, a sudden knife edge when you get up to the required temperature and you can switch the whole unit into cooling mode and you can see did you see there that all of the heater boost pump went off yeah yep. and then the cooler came on because the current temperature is above the 21 degree target for cooling. So if we yep. change it to standby, it means the room's got to get really hot before it does anything. So there's cooler command there. And just because we're there, I'll explain with it is other four a four. So let's go in to configure the module and temperature sensor and alarms. So they're not alarms as in wake up alarm or building alarm. They are completely configurable for what, uh, what you want them to do. So uh, we've, you can set a temperature, but I'm not gonna read these out to you. Get the software and have a quick play around. If you want to remotely connect from module, uh, let me know and I'll give you the login details. Okay, fine. So there's lots of dynamic things you can do and say you want above, and then you've got the f options of fixed or the current temperature. So if you, were, you had, say, three or four boost circuits in a room, you could use these extra alarm outputs to bring them on step, step at a time. So it's not one massive load of heat, you can break it all down. And the same with the cooling if you've got uh, multiple stages of cooling. Uh, this is just a quick page to show you how you can configure the thermostat so you can change the switching time, you can change the boost differential, the high stasis. So I'm not going to again read it out to you. But nice interesting thing in here is say you don't use a four wire actuator and use a two wire, so you need to delay the amount of time required before the pump comes on, then that's configurable in here. And two nice little functions we've got here is the heater and the pump um, jamming. So if we had a boiler interlock that uh, didn't actually put the heater on, the boiler on unless you really chose to, we can say every day for whatever the minimum switching time is, we'll actuate the valve and get some movement. So when they do want heating in the winter, we know all the valves have been moving for the summer months and they're not going to suddenly come across yeah, a jammed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's a nice little feature there. 
and there's, there's other stuff you can play around with. Um, okay, so that's again another place where we can rename the sensor. And then the last thing to do is show you how that reflects into the OLED. So at the moment, let's call, let's just rename this one so it makes sense. Let's rename that to OLED. And you can go into the OLED configuration and go to the thermostat, so temperature settings, and we choose the local control, no, not local control, sorry, um, sensors, so they've renamed it. Okay, so the only ones we've got activated at the moment are the OLED that I've just renamed, so that gives you local control, and we can add uh, the one we've just added little concern it says 65 degrees i knew it was warm in here didn't it? it was that warm oh no hold on sorry that's not the temperature that's the base address of the thermostat it's only because the one was 21 i went yes it's 21 degrees in here so there refers to the base address so the main one refers to the base address for the main module and then that's the thing uh, for the thermostat but you don't need to know that it makes absolutely no difference going forward okay. right so we synchronize that and then i'll show you how that's Affected. So let's come over here. So where have we got? Right. So there's the one page of buttons. There, there's nothing programmed up, and there's the family yep. room thermostat. And if we scroll sideways, we get the OLED one, and we can change the modes, and then we can scroll again, and we control the other room, and we can temporarily lift the target. Did you see that light come on? There, that told us we were uh, room temperature was below the target, and therefore it switched the heating on. So that's just a temporary override, but as soon as you select another mode, it'll reset it back. Okay, fine. Yep. So it's, yep. It's lots and lots of things you can do with it. Uh, right. Um, did you want to have a look at the um, PIR? What you can do with that, or yeah. is that a bit too deep for an introductory? As in, look at it in terms of what what it, what, what it does. What it does. Yes. Yeah. 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 Go on, yeah, go on you can. <laughs> right. So uh, this is the which one's this? This is the larger PIR. So you can see we've got dark and light output, and they simply change when the room light level breaks a threshold. So you can yep, see. Yep. Is all the configurations so currently pretty light in here, so it's uh, current value 44. And then at the top of this page, you can define when the light and dark sets are. So you could harvest this data in Umbrella software and do something with it, okay. or, or you can use it to trigger other things. So uh, you could, in theory, uh, roll back a cab, roll back a canopy if the room light level got too low, and it was still daylight. You could put a lock in there, and then at the top here we've got our motion tab, which is divided into the two separate outputs. So you've got motion one and motion two, and yep. you can say how long do you want to keep the state active uh, whenever it's triggered. And you'd simply add an action between motion one and the light, let's use an example, the light circuit, and it'd be a momentary follow. And the PIR will keep the light on for two minutes in this particular scenario and then go off. If you wanted to give the customer overriding control, so a, a push button on the wall, then you simply activate this external override and the PIR then monitors the button events. And if it detects the button, the user switched it on then it'll ignore the PIR until the user switches the light off. Does that make reasonable sense? Yeah, it does. Okay, and then you've got the same on the Motion 2, so you could have different lights and you can lock the channels out and do crazy stuff with that. And then uh, earlier I referred to the light dependent state, so it's exactly the same as the Motion, except it also requires a light level threshold to be broken before it does anything. Okay. And then you've got the absence, which is, a, as the name suggests, you could use this for uh, either triggering a house alarm or saying, well, the room is unused for, in this case, 15 minutes, which can shut down other things. So entirely up to your imagination as to what you want to use that for. 
and then these uh, uh, if you want the light level available on the bus it always doesn't use the light level per se but if you're using on umbrella software and you wanted to know the light value you can drop it onto the bus uh, by choosing a parameter there and then there are three basic settings for the sensitivity and then programming it's uh, a bit involved for an introductory session but uh, Natesh can explain how you can do this how you can use the program state to enable channels lock channels um, and, and, and their thermostats you also use it for temperature control and profiling so that's PIR in a nutshell anything else while we're here no I think that's it okay you know, yeah we've been on uh, an hour and nine minutes is that enough for you yeah, yeah, more than enough. <laughs> oh, more than enough. Oh, that's not. I don't want too keen on that. <laughs> right, let me stand up again. Okay. Obviously, this is what we're doing is virtual. So it's um, when it's when it's in person, it is much different vibe yeah. and all of that as well. Yeah, but um, oh, definitely. Yeah, but the times you have to how we can. Gosh, yeah, right, it's right. the best always, we can do. Now, yeah, you can't see the uh, the hardware physically, and uh, at the moment, all this, we just have to rely on on the interactions, and and that's about yeah. it. But but I know we've done um, uh, the basic training uh, last, and um, it can be just more and more questions coming in, more and yeah. more people want to know as well. So yeah, uh, this, this, it's, it's a bit of a different environment, but we're hanging, we're we getting to it. No, that's fine. No, that's that's good. It was a good session. Oh, thank um, you very much. Okay. Well, if there's any questions, feel free to ask Natesh and he'll bounce them over to me. Uh, if you want to get a remote connection into one of the de demo units, again, let Natesh know and I'll give you the connection details. Other than that, have fun. Bring us a project and uh, let's price it up for you. Yeah, perfect. Well, cheers. cheers for that. Okay, very welcome. Thank you. <laughs> welcome Thank to you. Velbus. Thank you. Thank you, guys. See you. So there we are. Thank you very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen, for watching this YouTube video. If there's anything you want to know, feel free to drop us a line in the comments or send an email to Natesh at SuperClick, and we'll do everything we can to help you in the future. Thank you very much indeed, and we look forward to your business.